All right, so we're gonna run through the first module of the reading and writing section for SAT test number two of the digital test that they just put online. So this is the first one of these that I'm doing. So we're just gonna start with the second test because why not? Um, most likely we're gonna see pretty much a lot of the same skills that we've seen from the old SAT, but we're gonna see a few different question types and a little bit more emphasis based on vocab from what I've read from what they've released here. So and that's what we start out with here. So this means for a lot of students, we're gonna have to spend some more time studying vocab words because I believe you're going to get 10 of these between the two modules that we'll work through. So it can be a pretty hefty amount of the test here. So in the early 1800s, the Cherokee scholar Sequoia created the first script or writing system for an indigenous language in the United States because it represented the sounds of this Cherokee, of spoken Cherokee so accurately, his script was easy to learn and thus quickly achieved blank. By 1830, over 90% of them are using it. So we're saying it's used by a lot of people. Widespread is the only one that's going to make any sense there. Um, so I'm going to read through this one, just jump to the second sentence here. I'm going to skim through the first one. In both plays, the all-female class cast blank, an array of female characters, including strong mother and several daughters dealing with individual struggles. We're saying it's like made up of is the context we're using here. That's really what comprises means. It's made, made up of those different pieces. We're not engulfing, encouraging, or provoking. Engulfing would mean like you're taking over something. Um, so same thing, most logical and precise word. These are really just vocab questions. So they're word and context questions. Um, so I'll skim through the first one here, buried valuable objects. This finding may persuade researchers who have argued that Bronze Age societies were ruled by men to blank, that women may have also held leadership rules. So we're saying they thought it was ruled by men, but we're showing a little bit of contrast here. So concede would mean we're going up against our initial thoughts and taking it based off new evidence here. Um, so that's gonna be our correct answer there. And we get a little bit of the context up here, which is showing like why they would be conceding their position. Number four is used in the text. What does the word endure most nearly mean? All right, so this is really just like a classic word in context question that we see all the time on the typical SAT. All right, so it's from an older play here. Have we got to part? I'm afraid so. It's a very painful parting. It's always painful to part from people whom one has known for a very brief space of time. The absence of old friends one can endure with equanimity. So like this is saying with like a calmness of your emotional state, this is a really advanced vocab word. So I think there's gonna be a lot more vocab we're gonna be having to study for the digital SAT. Um, but even a momentary separation from anyone to whom one has just been introduced is almost unbearable. So we're talking about, right, the absence of old friends one can basically deal with, with like an emotional stability, but even a momentary separation is almost unbearable. So we're talking about this is something you don't want to be going through. So we're going to be saying we're tolerating this um, as we're working through this question here. Um, best states the main purpose of the text. So really classic reading question. Now the big difference on the digital test is we're dealing with way smaller pieces, but it looks like a lot of our reading is going to be a little bit more advanced here. So this is from a 1924 poem. All right. There shall be new roads wending, a new beating of the drum. Men's eyes shall have fresh seeing. Gray lives were pies their span. But under the new sun's being, completing what night began, there will be the same backs bending, the same sad feet sheet sad feet shall drum when this night finds its endings and one day shall come we might be adding some fun poem reading for a lot of students here um so this can be a little challenging for a lot of people because this is kind of same as those more historical passages on the current sat where students read through and they're like what in the world am i reading but we're talking about like a consistency of events as we're going through so we'll see if we kind of work through this so a consider how the repetitiveness inherent in human life can be both what is this feature here? Oh, cool. So we can start striking answers. This definitely looks like a contender here. Um, we're talking about good and bad things, but we're talking about the repetition as we go through. To question whether activities completed at one time of day are more memorable than those at another. We're not talking about the memorability of something here. To refute the idea that joy is more commonly experienced. Nowhere in here did I see anything about the frequency or the commonness of these emotions. To demonstrate how the experiences of individuals relate to their communities. Nothing about individuals to communities. This is really just talking about people in general. There shall be new roads wending, a new beating of the drum, fresh seeing. So we're talking about nice things, sons being, completing what night began. And then 
the same kind of negative emotions down here. So A is gonna to have to be our correct answer. We're talking about the repetition and the positive and negative emotions. But a lot of the skills that are gonna be required as you're working through this is gonna really looks to be the exact same type of classic wrong answers we see on the SAT. So getting used to spotting those types of wrong answers and really nitpicking at your answers to find the right question, right answer choice, excuse me. The following text is from this 1888 poem. So a lot of historical stuff here. Oh, deep delight to watch the gladsome ways, exultant leap upon the rugged rocks, right? We're looking at the function of this part. So I'm paying attention to what this is doing as it compares to the rest of the text. Ever repulsed yet rushing on, filled with a life that will not know defeat. So we're, we're adding more information about these waves that we're talking about. To see the glorious hues of sky and sea, the distant snowy sails, glide spirit-like into an unknown world, to feel the sweet enchantment of the sea thrill all the soul, clearing the clouded brain, making the heart leap joyous is its own bright singing wave. So we've kind of gone from something really specific here that we're talking about with the waves and we're kind of giving a little bit more general information about the surroundings. So this portion is not portraying the surroundings because we really haven't introduced the surroundings yet. So I can get rid of A. It characterizes the sea's waves as a relentless and enduring force ever repulsed yet rushing on. So this is saying relentless. And we're also saying like it's enduring, filled with life that will not know defeat. That's actually our really relentless part. And this is our enduring part. So this is a classic thing the SAT does, which kind of flips the order of what you see in the text because it becomes harder for students to relate what's happening with it. But B is definitely our answer there. Um, overall structure of the text here, and I may have to pick up the pace and not do as much talking. Um, is cool secretly exchanging letters all right so she gave this letter to charlotte who ran to the balcony with it where she still found ronaldo in a melancholy posture leading his head on his hand showed him the letter but it was afraid to toss it to him for fear it might fall to the ground so he ran and fetched a long cane which he cleft at one end and held it while she put the letter into the cleft dun 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 okay so um, describes the delivery of a letter and then portrays a character's happiness in it, um, right? So never was so transported with joy, right? This whole part is really just talking about the delivery, about the fear of maybe dropping it on the ground. So this looks like A should be our correct answer, but I'll take a quick look at the others. Um, don't say anything about his desperation to receive a letter. Um, not showing concerns about delivering the letter, we're just showing concerns about dropping it during the actual exchange. Reveals the inspiration behind, we never talked about the inspiration, so A is definitely gonna be our answer there. Main idea of the text here, so really small little passage here. Um, secret garden, okay. Mary was an odd determined little person and now she had something to be determined about. She was very much absorbed indeed. She worked and dug and pulled up weeds steadily only becoming more pleased with her work every hour instead of tiring of it. It seemed to her like a fascinating sort of play. So really just saying she's really into gardening and she really loves it here. Um, we don't say anything about hiding there to avoid her chores. Mary's getting bored. We definitely don't say that she's getting poor, bored with anything around this. She's really enjoying it, right? She's becoming more pleased with every work of hour instead of tiring. So that would be opposite of the passage. Um, don't talk about this being a space to play. We're just really talking about she enjoys spending time in the garden. Believing that living in an impractical space can heighten awareness and even improve health, conceptual artist Madeline Ginz in Shusaku Arakawa, hopefully I'm not butchering that, designed an apartment building in Japan to be more fanciful than functional. A kitchen counter is chest high on one side and knee high on the other. A ceiling has a door to nowhere. The effect is disorienting but invigorating. After four years here, filmmaker Nobu Yamayoka, hopefully I'm not really butchering that, reported significant health benefits. So we're talking about this really strange space that these artists have decided because they think that creating this stuff that's more fanciful than functional is gonna heighten awareness and improve health. And now we're talking about an example showing that this is true. Um, so A, although inhabiting a home surrounded by fanciful features such as those, don't talk about this being unsustainable at all, right? This is something we could infer. This is a classic type of wrong answer we can see on the test, but we don't see that stated anywhere. Designing disorienting spaces like those in the Jins and Arakawa building is the most effective way. We definitely are not saying this is the most effective. This becomes far too specific. 
um, we're just talking about how this is a effective way, is a filmmaker, Yamayoka, has long supported the designs of conceptual artists. I don't see anything about long supporting the designs of this. We're just giving her as an example of this. She's after four years, she's reporting the health benefits, but she hasn't been supporting them for four years. Um, although impractical, the design of apartment building may improve. Yeah, this is it. That's all we're seeing in this last part is just giving us an example of that. All right, another main purpose of the text, another fun little poem here about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. There's a famous author. Though with the strike of mighty pen hast told of joy and mirth. Now mirth is typically used in kind of old English like this is like laughter or like really intense joy. So we're probably using it more so in terms of laughter here. Sounds like a kind of dark word, but it's actually not, and it doesn't have a negative connotation. Um, and read the hearts and souls of men is cradled from their birth. The language of the flowers, thou hast read them all, and in the little brook respond to thy call. Um, read the hearts of men, read them all. Okay. All right. Um, to praise a certain writer for being especially perceptive. Well, this definitely seems to be tr true. They're saying with the stroke of a pen, He's reading the hearts and souls of men, so he's knowing them really, really well since they've been born, and he understands like nature, and he's responding to his like life's call. So this seems to to work there for A, but I'll still look at the others. Um, nothing about him reading extensively. That's what knocks off B. Um, don't talk about his writing process. Don't talk about an afternoon they spent together. So A is going to be our right answer there. Which quotation from To You most effectively illustrates the claim? To You is an 1856 poem by Walt Whitman. In the poem, Whitman suggests that he deeply understands the reader whom he addresses directly writing. Okay, so we're the claim is that he's deeply understanding the reader here. This kind of seems like it's building on the last question, funnily enough, in a way, of a similar idea. Um, this is going to be the, really clearly has to be the right answer, but I'll look at the others. Um, doesn't show deep understanding, nothing to do with deep understanding. Um, this would talk about a fear for someone, but it doesn't have deep understanding. Your true soul and body appear before me saying like, I know exactly who you are as a person. So that would be showing a deep understanding of the reader. All right. So really pretty similar question we've seen from the, the current SAT here. Best describes the data from the table that support the researcher's claim. All right, so I'm gonna have to go down here and use the data from the table. I'm gonna fact check if it's correct, and then I wanna make sure it's supporting the claim. So a group of researchers working in Europe, Asia, and Oceania conducted a study to determine how quickly different Eurasian languages are typically spoken in syllables per second and how much information they can effectively convey in bits per second. They found that although language is very widely in the speed at which they are spoken, the amount of information that languages can effectively convey tends to vary much less. So this seems to be our claim. We'll see if we can like annotate. Eh, I'm not a huge fan of that system. Um, thus, they claim that two languages, oh, and we're, here's, here's our claim, went a little early there. Thus, they claim that two languages with very different spoken rates can nonetheless convey the same amount of information in the given amount of time. So if I'm looking at these answers, I know it has to be talking about that, showing different rates, but showing a similar amount of information. And then the second thing I want to get to check is, is this factually correct based off the table? Among the five languages in the table, Thai and Hungarian have the lowest rates of speech and the lowest rates of information contained. I don't even really have to check this, but we'll see if it's factually correct as well, because that's not supporting the claim. Um, Thai, Hungarian, lowest rates. Yeah, so that's factually correct, but doesn't have to do with the claim at all. Um, Vietnamese conveys information approximately the same rate as Spanish, despite being spoken at a lower rate. All right, well, I'm perking up here because this definitely seems like it would be answering the claim. Spanish is 7.7, .7, Vietnamese is 5.3, but their rates are really, really similar here. So this is probably going to be our correct answer. Among the five languages in the table, the language that is spoken the fastest is also the language that conveys the information the fastest. This has nothing to do with the claim here. Um, but Spanish is the fastest and the rate of information is not the fastest. Serbian and Spanish are spoken at approximately the same rate, um, but Serbian conveys information faster than Spanish. Well, that's actually backwards. So 
B is going to have to be our right answer there. Which choice best describes data from the graph that weaken the student's conclusion? All right, where's the student's conclusion? So this is talking about what the experiment is. Here's our nice conclusion there. So this is probably something that as I put together courses and stuff, I'll talk about strategies as I really flush all this out. But highlighting what you're looking for is going to make it easier, especially on a digital test like this, to know what information you want to refer back to so you don't have to go back through all the information. But the student concluded that the reduction in the spider population count in the enclosure with the litter lizards by day 30 was entirely attributable to the presence of the lizard of the lizards. Really got tongue twisted there. But we're just saying, the student's saying the spider population was all due to the presence of the litters of the lizards. So what's gonna weaken that conclusion is anything that's showing that it doesn't have to do with the lizards for it dropping. The spider population count was the same in both enclosures on day one. Well, this makes no sense at all because we're talking about day 30. The spider population count also substantially declined by day 30 in the enclosure without lizards. Now, this is true based off what we're seeing in the oh, table there and also would weaken the student's conclusion. The largest decline in spider population count in the enclosure with lizards, what we're, his claim doesn't have to do with when the biggest decline occurred um with lizards than the one without lizards that would not weaken the claim um that would strengthen the claim so that's why b is going to be our right answer there logically completes the text so basically a reading comprehension question although military veterans make up a small proportion and i think i'm gonna have to speed up the time here so i might do a little less talking they occupy a significantly higher proportion of the jobs one possible explanation is that the familiarity. Okay, so we're basically saying military veterans make a small proportion of the total population, but they take up a ton of the jobs in civilian government. And so here we're talking about they're being familiarized with it. Um, nope. Encourages non veterans. Wouldn't make any sense. Not about some amount of a military experience. We're talking about how they take up a lot of the jobs, so it has to be A here. All right, these should get quicker because we're on to standard conventions, and the names rule is back for the digital test again. So I don't even have to read this first sentence. I can just read this. Unfortunately, as researchers here is a non-specific identifier before the name, so I cannot put commas around the name. Um, this is a classic rule I teach all the time, so C is going to be our right answer. Um, cool, conventions again, most likely testing us on sentence structure with the use of a semicolon in there. Um, Seneca sculptor Marie Watts blanket art comes in a range of shapes and sizes. Oh, don't even have to read that part. In 2004, Watts sued strips of blankets together to craft a 10 by 13 inch sampler, independent clause. Here's our transition with the comma. If we have another independent clause, we have to put that semicolon. She arranged folded blankets into two large stacks and then cast them in bronze, creating two Oh, same ing phrases the sat loves those participle phrases we're gonna have to use the semicolon here everything else would end in a run-on sentence conventions once again looks like we've got our fun that rule maybe a little bit of commas and fanboys here gathering accurate data on water flow in the united states is challenging because of the country's millions of miles of waterways and the fact that the volume and speed of water at any given location can vary drastically over time all right, they're adding a few things here. One, th that phrases are always essential. So no commas after that. So get rid of those two. And now the other thing here is we just really have a list of two items in the sentence. We have the first part. The second part has a list within it. But since we have a list of two items, we don't want to use a comma with our fanboys. And this second comma here would automatically be wrong as well. So D is going to be our right answer. No punctuation needed. All right, more standard conventions. Ah, and same exact patterns. So I immediately can spot that this is a misplaced modifier. In assessing the films of Japanese director Akira Kurosawa, well, who or what could be assessing the films could only be critics. None of the other ones make any sense. This is a misplaced modifier question. Get in all the same writing and language stuff here. So more conventions. All right help produce 
Oh, all right, this looks like something that really started to come on the SAT a lot more in 2022 and 2021. And this is our semicolon list. So if we have kind of more of a complex list that has punctuation inside of it, we can kind of model it based off what we see in the rest of the sentence. Chickasaw TV in 2010, Rosetta Stone language course in Chickasaw in 2015. Since we have these commas in the other items in the list, we're gonna to wanna to separate each of the items independently with a semicolon so it becomes clear and obvious to the reader that we are separating items that also have commas within them. So, um, all right, help produce the world's first indigenous language instructional app, Chickasaw Basic in 2009, semicolon, an online television network, let me make sure I'm not missing. Yep, yeah, so it's gonna be C here. Um, each of these other ones would not be following the listing portion. So it's a little bit of a rarer rule that a lot of students aren't familiar with. Um, but we have a list here. So C is gonna be our right answer. Chickasaw Basic in 2009, Chickasaw TV in 2010. Yeah, there's our exact same pattern as well. So you could also always kind of use a little bit of parallel structure to help you here. All right, well, see if our same trick works here. Period, semicolon are the same on the SAT for a long time, so you can eliminate both of them. A group of ecologists led by Axel Mill Pfeffer and Max Planck um, at the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Ecology in Germany examined the defensive responses of two varieties of the sweet potato, TN57, which is known for its insect resistance in TN66. We're gonna be using a colon here. We're giving explanation, definition, clarification. We don't have two independent clauses, so we can't use the period or semicolon. All right, transitions here. All right, when in the 1800s, so you do wanna be really careful with reading all the context for these. This is another place that a lot of students need to spend time memorizing these because they can often pick up the context well, and this is why I have a good sheet my writing and language course currently, and we'll add one for the digital, digital that covers all the different transitions in the families, because if you don't know how it's supposed to be used, it's really easy to get tripped up. So when in the 1800s, geologists first realized that much of Earth had once been covered by great sheets of ice, some theorized that the phenomenon was cyclical, occurring at regular intervals. Each ice age is so destructive, though, that it largely erases the geological evidence of its predecessor. Blank geologists were unable to confirm the theory of cyclical ice ages until the 1960s. All right, so we're saying, right, we're theorizing this idea of these cyclical ice ages here, but now we're saying, like, because it's so destructive, we were not able to confirm the theory of it until the 1960s, so we're looking for any sort of causation transition, hence is going to be the only one. We're not showing an overcoming with nevertheless. We're not adding additional information. We don't have a list, so we don't want to use next. Compare the lengths of the two runnels. A lot more of these specific which choice questions. Which choice most effectively uses relevant information? So the really important part is I'm comparing the lengths of them. So Saiken is in Japan, connects those. Here's a length. Channel is in Europe. Here's its length. Um, some of the world's longest tunnels. So this is not comparing those two. Um, doesn't compare the two of them and doesn't talk about the length. It's just going to be B here. With these questions, it's just really important. Any sort of which choice question, make sure you're answering the question. Student wants to specify the reason that the play Pleiades appearance changed, which choice most effectively uses relevant information from the notes to accomplish this goal? Ancient Native American and Australian or original cultures described the Pleiades, star clusters having seven stars. It was referred to as the seven sisters in the mythology of ancient Greece. Today, the cluster appears to only have six stars. Two of the stars have moved so close together that they now appear as one. So right, we're specifying why it changed. So A, ancient Native American and Aboriginal cultures describe the Pleiades, doesn't talk about a change, although once referred to as the Seven Sisters, only six today. Well, this is talking about the change, but it's not really specifying. So I'll leave it up for now, but I'm probably going to knock it off. In the time since the ancient cultures described the Pleiades as having seven stars, two of the stars clusters have moved so to close together that they now appear as one. This should be our right answer. Um, 
it's really simply because that's the only one that's specifying. Both V and D are talking about the appearance change, um, but it's not specifying and using this information here in the most effective manner to do that. The student wants to emphasize the fossil significance. There we go, it's the same thing. I'm always honing in on what I'm reading before I'm kind of, kind of come up, coming over here because it's gonna help me find those details better. Um, uses that, all right, pinnipeds, living around water, descended from sea animals, recently found a fossil with four legs. This fossil was a transitional fossil, and okay, it's illustrating an evolution from pinnipeds to their land-dwelling ancestors. So that seems to be the significance. Canadian paleobiologist Natalia Fossil has the skull and teeth. This doesn't talk about the significance here. Are descended from those not talking about the significance having four legs but the skull and teeth of a seal the rare fossil illustrates that an early stage in the evolution from the land dwelling ancestors well this is emphasizing the significance and it's using all this information over here so this is really just like kind of an information synthesis question where you're pulling the stuff together but this is a classic SAT question your job is simply to answer it as long as you answer it, they seem to be pretty clear so far. All right, the student wants to emphasize a difference between the two portraits. So I'm looking for what's different between them as I read through. So this is an artist, specializes in portraits. A portrait is artistic representation. Okay, painting, drawing. That's going to have to be our difference between the two of them. Um, nothing to do with painting and drawing. Nothing to do with painting and drawing. Painting, drawing, that should be it for this question. All right, the student wants to emphasize the role a misconception played in the naming of a place, right? So same thing, I'm reading and looking out for what I'm answering for, because now as I read through this, I can tune into the information which is gonna be important. All right, this is a novel that was popular in the 16th century. The novel featured a fictional island inhabited by black women and known as California. That same century, Spanish explorers learned of an island off the west coast of Mexico. They called it California after the island in the novel. The island was actually the peninsula now known as, okay, thank you for the warning, um, which lies to the south of the US state. Well, here is our misconception, right? So same thing, hopefully they'll kind of make this system a little bit easier. We don't have to click all over the place, but seems to work pretty well. But that's what I'm looking for. So that's my misconception. Not a misconception. Not the misconception. That is the misconception there. Peninsula. Yep, yeah, okay. Thinking it was an island, they call the peninsula. That's our misconception. All right, the student wants to emphasize a similarity between the two paintings. So once again, right, and let's see if we can annotate this part. Oh, cool. So this will be a really helpful thing where you just want to break down exactly what you're focusing on the question. So if you get lost, you can kind of reorient yourself a little bit quicker. Which choice most effectively uses relevant information to do that? All right, German artist Emanuel Lutz painting washing crossing the Delaware. That's funny, that is actually in an SAT passage. Um, his huge painting depicts the first US president crossing a river. So size and the nature of what it's crossing. Cree artist painted Wooden boat people, resurgence of this. So maybe it has something to do with the river here, but this seems to be our really clear consistency between the two of them. The size of the paintings is the most obvious similarity. Hopefully they make this system a little better that I can kind of pick up. It doesn't have to do with the time. That's not a similarity. Um, the actions we're not focusing on. This is gonna be our really clear similarity there. Oh. And that's it. So I was actually able to finish on time there with all of the talk throughs. Um, so I'll go through afterwards and check these, but I'm pretty confident I got all of those right. Nothing really tricky here. Honestly, this is a lot of the exact same skills that we've seen the SAT has tested over the years. The main difference is the reading. You don't have to wade through those big passages. And we're getting a lot more of difficult vocab components of the test here. So both of the specific questions where we're looking for vocab words, and I'll move this over here, as well as for a lot more advanced vocab in some of those poems and stuff. So I'm going to pause the test here so I can just run through another video 
um, for that second one. Um, but that's going to be it for here. But definitely make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you out. If you guys have any questions regarding the digital SAT, drop them in the comments.